this is Old Mates Backyard Tech. All right. Now, I've been sitting on this video for nearly six weeks. The viewer got in touch with me nearly eight weeks ago now. You see, the reason I've been sitting on this video is, A, I've been trying to work out a way to avoid Old Mates Backyard Tech's know-it-all experts for chewing my head off on this. And B, how to express it in my own friendly fashion and opinion as to why I prefer a certain mixing console manufacturer over anyone else. Nearly eight weeks ago, a viewer got in touch wanting to know why Harrison consoles, and specifically in the analog realm, the 32C, over any other console manufacturer out in the marketplace. Neve, SSL, Focusrite, API, Mackey, Soundcraft, Tascam, Yamaha, Behringer. Why Harrison? And why the 32C? To be brutally honest, there's about four mixing consoles you can discard. Although based on what I've read and opinions from other people, I probably wouldn't like them. Why the Harrison? I've used one. And they are the best sounding analog recording console I think anyone will ever hear. But they're also a forgiving mixing console. And the EQ sounds phenomenal. Mixing consoles. Monitor and reference speakers. Effects and dynamics. Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, it's Pro Audio time. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is Pro Audio time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech for AV Fridays. A little bit of a Q&A and advice video as well, but also an opinion video, which automatically the know-it-all experts are ready to type starting multiple four-letter words of abuse at me for this. A viewer by the name of Cameron nearly eight weeks ago got in touch and wanted to know why Harrison and specifically why the 32C. Now, I have used a number of 24 and 32 channel recording consoles. I've used a couple of 16 channel as well. I've used Neve. I've used SSL. I've obviously used Harrison. I've used Tascam. I've used Yamaha. Mackie, Soundcraft. However, having said that, I cannot quantify API and I certainly cannot quantify Focusrite. They're two analog consoles I have had no experience with. But the Harrison, now I'll put a photo down there for those that don't know it. Up until you coming across the first 32C, I'd used SSL and I've used Neve. Now, SSL solid state logic, and we're not talking freaking like computer type SSL. We're talking a brand name here. Okay, get it through your thick heads. Solid state logic just doesn't mean like IC chips and that. It's the name of a company. It's just that it's called SSL. Um, so I've used SSL, I've used Neve, and obviously, you know, I deal with Behringer, or I have dealt with Behringer, I've had to deal with Tascam, but I can't quantify Focusrite or API because I've never used their consoles. I'll be upfront with you all now, I have never used or heard with my own ears an API console or a Focusrite console, so we can wipe them off the mark. The Harrison. Now, the thing about a 32C is its EQ is, to my ears, beautiful. The signal flow down from your input, from your input gain, through your channel assignments and your bus assignments, down through your EQ, down through your sends, down to the fader, and then obviously either out, out to your multi-track or out your, your 
your stereo master out, whichever way you want to look. It is a beautiful, beautiful sound. Each channel strip is modular, so you can replace bits of it. Lose an EQ, you just get another EQ. Lose a fader control, to undo it, pull it out, drop the new one in. Okay, it was all plug-in module stuff. It had a really nice, clean analog sound to it. The patch bay, okay. Now, I've used a Harrison 32C. The know-it-all experts will also say they've used a Harrison 32C, like they'll say they've used SSL and Mackie and Sandra, all of them. Because they, they want to make sure that they, you know, make sure everyone knows that they've also used them. Um, the patch bay was easy to configure for both full normal and half normal patching, depending on your configuration in your recording studio. The meter bridges, so easy to understand. But it was just, I mean, unless you've actually used a Harrison 32C, and you can see the know-it-all experts, oh, I know what you're talking about, I've already used one. Um, if you've only used an SSL and a Neve, you're probably going to make the assumption they are the best desks. But you put that up against a Harrison 32C? I don't think anything comes closer. Again, I want to quantify the fact I don't know Focusrite. I don't know API. They are two analog consoles I've got no experience with. Yes, I've got experience with Behringer. Mackie, Soundcraft, Neve, SSL, Harrison. You see how it sort of went up? Um, I don't really hold Behringer in that higher regard, and I'm surprised the know all experts aren't howling on me for not having Behringer at the top of the list. Same goes with Tascam. Right? I'm not a fan of Tascam, at least from a mixer point of view. Some of their other bits and pieces, like their... Uh, demo cassette deck um uh, their their dat wasn't too bad it wasn't great but it wasn't too bad um but up until finding the harrison i probably would have said a toss-up between ssl and neve now the biggest ssl i used was 24 channels not a very big desk is it i mean my O2R is 24 channel. So, not a very big desk. But as you can see with a 32C, they're a very big console. That's not the reason I like, well, obviously, you know, it's a big console. But Harrison just had this sound about the desk that really, to me... It was a very forgiving desk. The EQ was extremely forgiving. The fader had... It was very hard to get the... Uh, the console I used was very hard to get it to go to distortion. But having said that, I mean, if you put a Harrison console up against, say, a 4600 SSL, um, I don't think there's much competition. They're two different desks. I've recorded on a Harrison. I've mixed on a Harrison. I've recorded on an SSL. I've recorded on an S a Neve and mixed on a Neve. I've recorded on a Behringer. I've recorded on a Mackie. I've recorded on a Soundcraft, but never mixed on them. Okay. But the desks that I have mixed on and recorded on, I think Harrison beats them. Now, if I had a Harrison 32C here at home, wow. I don't know how I'd fit it in here. They are a physically very big deck. Desk, sorry. Mixing console, mixing desk, whatever you want to call them. Someone's going to howl on me because I've called it a console. Someone's going to howl on me because I've called it a desk. The channel strip, the bus assignments, the EQ, the... Just, just the whole flow of your channel down your strip and across your board. 
okay, all the way through to your, your outputs, whether it's your multi outs, your bus outs, or your stereo master out. Your patch bay, it was just... I always thought that the desks I'd used previously, being SSL and Neve, were good desks. And the minute I came across the Harrison, it's like, oh no, bugger this, it's Harrison or nothing. When I sit with Mixbus, okay, when I've got Mixbus open, and I open the mixing console, I'm opening a 32C. Now, forget the editor window. I'm sitting in front of a 32-channel mixing console from Harrison. Now, some people are going to sit there and say, oh, it's just because you like the American stuff, old mate. No. Look, I can't quantify API. I can't quantify even focus right. But... Most people would make the assumption that I'm using Mixbus because it's a very simplistic DAW. It ain't simplistic. It does everything Pro Tools will do, but its interface is more friendly. And especially if you've ever used a 32C mixing console, you can sit in front of Mixbus. That's why I can use Mixbus 32C's mixer because I've sat in front of a Harrison. Um, look, the Harrison one I have had experience with. The 950 I know nothing about other than what I've read. Do I want a 950? I don't have anything to plug it into. I mean, to get it into my PC, you'd need to get an RME system or another... Um, you know, as we saw in tech news today during midweek Wednesday you'd need to get something like a UCX system um, so that the 950 console probably has that same feel to it that a 32C does but if you're really talking your traditional old school large format consoles the 32C I think sounds better now, when I say sounds better, let me explain. You're in a live space, okay? Um, dead room. Now, what do I mean by live space, dead room? Okay, it's a room where you can put the band in, but there's no reflective surfaces. It is a sonically dead room. It is so well insulated that it has a totally flat response with no echo, no comb filtering, no reverb, nothing. It is a very heavily insulated room. So a live space meaning you put the band in there, but it is sonically dead, which means any form of effects you want to run, you're going to have to do it with OB or uh, outboard or onboard equipment, depending on whether you're going to an external recording device or onto a PC, all right? So either you're onboarding or outboarding as far as I'm concerned. That's how I differentiate. Now, where I used the Harrison, it was a sonically dead room. Where I used a Neve, it was a sonically dead live space. The sound of the mixer, just with the band playing. So you've done your gain structure, you've done your fader structure, and you just sit, you're not, you haven't armed your multi track recorder. You're just sending it straight out through the stereo bus, either out through your monitors or your references. Take your pick, it doesn't matter. I've done that with three desks, SSL, Neve, and Harrison. The Harrison has a sound about it that I think is far nicer and cleaner than that of the SSL 24 channel I used and obviously the Neve, which the Neve actually, I think for memory, the Neve was only a 16 channel console. But even with only, you know, whether you're talking 16, 24, or 32 channels. Okay? Doesn't matter. You only need about... I only need about 12 channels of... 12 inputs, I should say. I'm sorry. I only need 12 inputs to figure out how a desk is going to sound. And the Harrison sounds better than any of them. 
Now, many sound engineers will say, no, I'm wrong. Now, the know-it-all experts will too. They'll say SSL. They'll say Neve. API with the, what is it, the XS. Okay. Um, the Mackies, the Soundcraft. No, I, I, look, I can't. People often say, you know, sound engineers have used every desk under the sun. I haven't. And I have avoided using the the uh, totally digital, totally touchscreen controlled mixing consoles. The ones where you plug your mic in and the ADDA converter runs across the entire back of the input section and the signals go through the console in a totally digital format. Very similar to what the O2R does, but not exactly. All right. The O2R does have the ability to go analog out. Okay. These digital mixing consoles have got no analog out. You've got to send them back through an ADDAC. And you're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars anyway. But nevertheless, I put Harrison as the pinnacle. And I see, I can say this sort of stuff. Okay. I'm not endorsed by anyone. I'm not sponsored by anyone or anything like that. So I can actually say this with utter honesty without, you know, upsetting anyone else. And I don't care if people hate this comment. I really don't. In fact, if the know-it-all experts hate this comment, I'll just block their comments and delete them. To me, Harrison's 32C is the duck's guts of analog recording consoles ever made. And that, I can say that and still accept the fact that I've never used a Focusrite or an API. Now, those engineers out there that have used Focusrite or have used API, and as well as, you know, all the others, may turn around and go, look, old mate's backyard tech, I take your point, but the Focusrite is a better mixer. Okay, you might be able to say that. I can only judge Focusrite from what I've read. I can only judge API from what I've read. I've never actually been in a studio to hear them. <coughs> so to me Harrison console it look it's the exact same reason I've got mix bus I haven't got mix bus because well I can't say that I've got mix bus because it is Harrison and I have a great load of respect for Harrison but I got mix bus because the mixer side of it is like using a 32C, which is why I can do what I do in Mixbus without reading the documentation regarding the mixer, because strangely enough, I've used one. The know-it-all experts will be there going, oh, well, so have we, so have we, so have we. You know what they're like. Um, so, I, look, how, MV5 knows this, my good mate, okay? He knows this. He knows the level of respect and the level of um, oh, love I have for anything Harrison. And I I mean, when we've looked at Mixbus 32C, I haven't been unlike other people. I'm not jamming it down your throat saying, you know, get this mix, you know, get this DAW, the only DAW you ever use, blah, 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 blah. People will tell me to shut my face in FOF. I don't do that. The reason I run Mixbus is, number one, I trust Harrison. Number two, as I've said before, I don't know what they've done to it. But when I'm sitting here with the mixer right in front of me there on the main screen, everything said 0 dB VU, the output of the speakers at 65 to 70 dB SPL, I waited and I bring up the mixer console now it doesn't matter where you're talking 32c 5 6 or 7 I bring up the mixing console my brain and my ears automatically switch over to I'm sitting in front of a 32c Harrison console and it's in the analog realm so that's it the Harrison is a brilliant mixing console, and I think it is the best analog console 
ever made. Now, I'm not fishing for stuff from Harrison. I don't do that. I'm not fishing for stuff from any other mix and console manufacturer to turn around to me and go, oh, you'll like our mixer. No, I can, I can say this sort of stuff. SSL are good. Solid State Logic, very popular. We know that. Many, many, many groups and bands around the world over the years have recorded and been mixed on SSL mixes. Same with Neve mixes. Soundcraft, Mackie, Tascam. Derringer. But I have to take out API and I have to take out Focusrite because they are two mixing consoles. Watch the comments from the know it all experts. Oh, I've used them. They are two consoles I have no knowledge of other than what I've read. I've never actually heard them. And you can't base, and I, I've, I've mentioned this before, you can't base a mixer on what you read. Now, other engineers will disagree with that, and that's fine. But in my opinion, you can read everything you want to about a mixing console. You can read all the tech specs, the frequency response, the EQ, the parametric shelvings, routings, signal flow, signal chain, side chain systems, all that. But is that going to tell you how the mixer sounds? Is that going to tell you how the signal sounds going through the channel strip? See, you get these people who think they know it. And they'll, they'll go in there and they'll say, oh, I know everything about this mixing console. I know it. Oh, this doesn't sound the way it read. Nothing ever does. I've read about the Harrison 32C. I've read about Neve. I mean, the mighty 4600 series SSL. Great mixing console. Very good. You know, compression on the, on the mixing system. A, an EQ that really actually does sound pretty good. A gain structure that's nice and forgiving. A meter bridge that's easy to follow. I mean, all this. No, I'll take the 32C over the top of it. Now, is that saying I hate SSL? That I think solid state logic are a useless mixing? No, I don't think that. SSL are, are great mixing consoles. Don't get me wrong. So are Neve. I've used three of them. Harrison is better. Now, does that mean if I was to walk in a recording studio and they've got a, you know, Neve 24 channel model, I'm just going to say, oh, I'm not touching. No, I'm not going to say that. But my mixing console of choice, if I was to walk into a studio and they've got a Harrison, grab me a cup of coffee, let's get started. I don't need to, I mean, some... There, there was a recording engineer. I don't remember his name. No, at all experts come on, howl on me. I don't know this guy. I can't remember his name. He used to walk into a recording studio. He was a freelance engineer. He'd walk into a recording studio about three, four hours before the band was due to rock up and figure out how to make the mixer sound right for what he wanted to record. Now, in my case, I used to do a similar thing. If I was going into a studio and I didn't know what they'd have, I'd spend an hour or two looking at the console and seeing how it sounds before I start working out how to record it. If I had a tech with me at the same time, he'd be in the live space miking up while I'm tuning the desk up. Not that I ever EQ'd the desk. I don't EQ when recording. Now, I've already been howled on it for that, for that comment anyway. So, as far as I'm concerned, the 32C is the duck's guts of the old analog recording mixes. And just because you could record it didn't mean you couldn't do a mix on it. Of course you could mix. I've mixed on a Harrison. I've mixed a band on a Harrison and I've mixed recording electronic music on a Harrison. That was tedious. That was really, really, really tedious that time because the DJ was using already mastered tracks. And so you're trying to, you can do it, it, it's very, very tedious. And that was when my ears were far better than they are today. As I said, I've lost everything under about 45 hertz and everything over 19 kilohertz or 18. I can sort of hear 18 and a half K, but I can't hear from 18 and a half or 18 point. Uh, what is it? 18 and a half. 
18.8 through to 20k i think it is i've lost that those frequencies but anyway there we go that's harrison and like i said they are the best mixing console in the world as far as i'm concerned people will disagree with it the old the know-it-all experts definitely will i don't care there we go stick around we've got an interesting music remix video coming up for you shortly have a good one This has been an Old Mate's Backyard Tech presentation.